planning a convention for 200 or 2,000, come to the Chase Park Plaza in St. Louis. Hotels are mostly for out-of-towners, but for the past 100 years, the Chase Hotel, a beacon of hospitality in the center of the country, has also held a storied place at the center of life in St. Louis. I think the Chase is St. Louis. In 1922, at the corner of Kings Highway and Lindell, a local developer named Chase Ullman built an elaborate hotel and modestly named it after himself. Seven years later, a competing hotel called the Park Plaza was built next to the Chase. Eventually, the two would become one when developer Sam Coppler, the man who built the Park Plaza, bought the Chase and combined the two buildings into one hotel and put his gregarious but detail-oriented son, Harold, in charge. He would actually measure the cheesecakes with a tape measure to make sure that they were high enough in the, in the window display. He was a real hands-on manager. He knew all the employees on a first-name basis and considered them all family. Harold Coppler turned the hotel into a destination of its own, as welcoming to locals as it was to travelers, giving birth to the slogan, the chase is the place. Years later, when the Park Plaza side of the hotel was turned into apartments, some St. Louisans became permanent guests. I always loved hotels, and this was my favorite. Jim Espy has lived here twice, the first time while he was a student at St. Louis University. The hotel was a different place back then. It was still magical, still wonderful. The neighborhood was evolving. We didn't have heat all the time. The air conditioning didn't work perfectly, but it was still wonderful. There were great people living here and I loved it. Under the Coppler family's ownership, the Chase Park Plaza became a city within a city, featuring a wide variety of restaurants and lounges. But the real hot spot was the Chase Club, which brought in some of the biggest names in show business. Among the famous guests who stayed at the Chase Park Plaza were Mick Jagger, Hugh Hefner, and Elvis, Dean Martin, Jerry Lewis, and Jerry Lee Lewis. Visiting baseball teams almost always stayed at the Chase, as did several U.S. presidents. A few visitors never left. I don't believe in ghosts, but there is a very well-known car dealer it's a big name in town. And he was staying here for about three months while his home was being renovated. And he moved out after four days because a red-headed woman in a white dress appeared before him every night. And he just left. Wonderful memories, wonderful memories. Jeannie Venn was the hotel's chief concierge for 30 years. She knows all the secrets and all the stories, like what happened the night Jerry Lee Lewis was scheduled to play at the hotel's New Year's Eve party. Jerry Lee Lewis had married his cousin, who was 14 years old, and it was a sold out New Year's Eve. The room was packed. And the lobby was filled with sheriffs and policemen in law enforcement people of all kinds. They let him finish the show, and they discreetly took him away in handcuffs. Elvis was here, and he needed to be escorted in behind scenes. We brought him in through the sublevel tunnels and up the freight elevator, and unfortunately, when the freight elevator opened, they were, at the time, removing a guest that had passed overnight. So it was a little shocking for Elvis. Always trying to stay ahead of the competition, Harold Coppler made two of the most dramatic changes in the hotel's 100-year history. He added a swanky pool where the original entrance used to be, and in 1957, he added the Coruscant Ballroom. And at the back of the ballroom, he added a television station, KPLR Channel 11, a combination that led to the birth of a legendary television program called Wrestling at the Chase. He just had a real vision for the future and had all these wild ideas. And most of them were just crazy and never panned out, but some of them were game changer type ideas. But by the 1980s, new competition and old age were slowly nudging the chase into a death spiral. The cobbler sold it and the new owners 
kind of let it go, let it slip. It was sad. It was really sad. In 1989, the hotel closed and sat vacant for 10 years until new owners and a $100 million renovation brought the chase back to life. In 2017, Sonesta Hotels bought the Chase Park Plaza and spent tens of millions more updating it to the high design standards of its Royal Sonesta brand. It is the crown jewel of the Central West End and the Grand Dame of the city of St. Louis and we want to continue being part of the history and of the people of St. Louis. There were plenty of times over the past 100 years when it seemed like St. Louisans would have to start saying the chase was the place. But people who believed it was too precious to lose did what had to be done over and over again to keep the Chase Park Plaza from becoming the Heartbreak Hotel. There are new people making their own memories now. I hope it goes on for at least another 100 years. The Chase is the place. It is and it always has been. We all love it.